Hello, I hope you're all doing well out there. I've been going through my studio and sorting out some of my art supplies and in doing so I found a whole bunch of stuff that I totally forgot I had. I don't know if this is just me or if other people have the same problem that you collect stuff, you put it in a safe place and then months go by and it gets forgotten. So this is going to be my forgotten art supplies haul. Things that I have had in the studio for a very long time and I'm going to pull them out and hopefully eventually use them at last so let's get into it the first thing is this folding palette which I actually showed in an art supply haul video well over a year ago now and I put it away I hadn't actually forgotten about it but I just didn't know what to put in it and it's one of those ones that it has quite a lot of paint wells in it so what I was planning to do is actually put the paint in the wells so this bit comes out so there's an extra palette and it's got all of these wells. I thought about putting in some M. Grahams, but since a lot of them were sent to me in half pens, there's no way I can actually put them into this one. So what I thought I would use this for is for gouache. And if you remember in my Christmas 2020 art haul, I showed some tubes of gouache. Well, I am going to use this as my gouache palette. I actually have one, but it's not very good. It's not very big. It's just a tiny little palette that I've had lying around. It's pretty old, it's pretty messy. So I'm instead going to upgrade into this one, move all of the colors into there. These are my existing paints. They are in my paint tube tower. So I shall find all of those. I'll add these ones. And this is going to be a video that I'm going to do very soon is setting up this gouache palette. Speaking of gouache, I also found this. I have only used this a little bit. This is Karen Dash Gouache Studio. When I open the tin, it's actually a bunch of pans that are gouache and there's a tube of white and it comes with a paintbrush. I have used it a little bit, but I really want to get back and use this some more. Another paint set that I got, which I actually thought was gouache and turned out not to be because I picked up the wrong box, is a basic oil color set. I don't know if I'm going to use these or give them away. I squeezed some of it out thinking it was gouache and it turned out to be blimmin' oil paint. So yes, I did kind of wreck one of my brushes. I was very upset over that. But it's just a little bunch of tubes. I have no idea what that thing is. Oh yes, that was to poke into the thing. Those poker things, I so say you can break that seal. So I haven't even opened these. I have not done oil painting in a very long time. So I'm kind of hoping to do at least one oil painting this year, but I've got this tiny little set. I've got no idea what they're like. They're probably pretty average, but they'll be okay just for doing an oil painting study. My father gave me these about two years ago and I've not really used them very much. I would like to use them. It's a really nice set. There's one and then there's a second tray of them. He got these off Amazon. If I can find them, I'll link them down below in the description so you can check them out. They're just a nice little set of oil paints. I have swatched them. I'll get my swatch card out for them because they are really pretty colours. They are not going back in there. <laughs> so I did swatch these out on a piece of cardboard that I'd covered in gesso. You can see they're really pretty colours. Some of them are quite transparent and other ones I think are quite opaque. But I need to do a painting with these. I really do. So that is something that I am putting on my to-do list and I really hope I actually get around to it this year. It's like I have so many video ideas, it's very hard to do them all, but I'm going to try and do an oil painting. As well as those sets, I also have a whole bunch of oil paint tubes that I've had for years. I mean, I'm talking at least 10 years, if not more. And I did use these for quite a while until I got out of oil painting, but they're just a fairly basic standard student grade oil paint here. Although I do have a few more professional ones as well, but I've sorted these all into nice containers from Ikea and they have oil paint tubes on them. So those are all on a shelf and I'm not going to worry about those today. I'll just look at some of the other supplies I have, which I had completely forgotten about. These ones, I do remember they're still there. I just haven't got around to using them yet. Okay, I've got a couple of mediums here. This is actually 
acrylic clear gesso. I picked this up a while ago when I saw it. I still haven't actually used it and I really want to. The reason I wanted to find clear gesso is because sometimes I want to do a drawing and then paint the gesso over the top. And I have used other clear gesso and it is a really horrible rough texture, but I think this one's actually smooth. I also have some watercolor ground medium by Core and I've only used it a little bit. I still have not figured out how to get it to work properly. So that's another thing on my to-do list. Okay, in here, this lovely wooden case that I found possibly at Ishka a while ago. I use this for my paint brushes, acrylic paint brushes. And also when I opened the box, I remembered that I've got some golden open slow drying acrylics. So I need to do a painting with these. And the reason I got these ones is because I'm not a big fan of acrylic paints. They dry way too fast for my liking. I've used the slow drying ones once and they were really nice but I want to do a much larger piece and really test them out so I'm going to do a proper review on these and a proper painting. In here I have quite a lot of really nice looking acrylic brushes that I also haven't really used very much yet. They're Araldo de Paolo and that came in a set. I've got some little ones. I don't know if those belong in here. I also have this huge one. It's just that little bit too big to sit unless I put it sideways, but it usually ends up rolling and squishing the brushes. So I've left this one separately because it's just a bit too large for here. But this fits my tubes of paint in it quite nicely and one of these days I will paint with them. <laughs> okay, I found a bunch of metallic pens. I've got copper leafing. This one is red shimmer. There is a gold one. I don't know that these are any good still, but I also have a couple of permanent metallic golds, a silver, and also a couple of white paint markers. Now this one is oil based, so I'm thinking this would actually probably go maybe quite well over colored pencils because water based over oil based pencils is not a great idea but maybe oil based ink over oil based pencils would work i don't know that's something i'm going to test out i also have this art graph which is a water soluble graphite and i have used it a bit as you can see but it got lost in one of my drawers and i just dug it out now so i will put that back into circulation and use this at some point as well. So these are just some random pens that I found. I've had this tin of graphite pencils by Karen Dash, 15 Graphwood ones. I think there are actually 16 in here because for some reason my tin came with doubles of I think it was the 3B and it was missing the 2B or something like that so I ended up having to buy another one. But I've not done a drawing with these pencils yet. Hang my head in shame. But what I love about these pencils, and basically it goes in order from lightest to darkest. And this looks like possibly the darkest one, which is a 9B. So it's a good looking set and I really need to get this out and use it. I am not sure how well these work in comparison to my favorite graphite pencils, which are the Stettler Mars Lumograph pencils. I also have a set of those. And I do use those <laughs> but this one has been sitting on my writing desk and I just kind of forgot it was there so I think I will actually move this over to my actual drawing desk and then I might even use it <laughs> and in case I make a mistake I found this eraser so I'll put that into my drawer as well I also have this set of angelic color uni ball signo pens now i use the white ones all the time i did not realize that these were the same brand but these are super pretty they're like this really lovely pastel color and i've used them quite a bit in various coloring books i even colored a page over christmas in this coloring book that i had and you can see what they look like there's also some glitter pens in there but the pastel colors are really pretty. So I thought these would be a really fun set of colors to use for an artwork or something. So I also
also have some charcoal and I picked this up when I thought that I was actually going to go and do some charcoal drawings. I am just not very good with it. I don't particularly care for the messiness of it but this is a really pretty box that I've had lurking about. I've got a paddle somewhere. This is actually like a charcoal sharpener. These are the refills and somewhere around I have the paddle for it so that you can sharpen down these sticks of charcoal. There's a holder for them and they come with little color codes for the different softness and hardnesses. <laughs> One of them snapped. I was so mad at myself. That's the other reason I don't particularly care for charcoal that much is because they break so easily. But it comes in a few different sizes. This is kind of a sample set. As you can see, I did manage to sharpen a couple of them. But I don't know. I'm just not that keen on charcoal. I have the set, but I don't know if I'm going to use it anytime soon. I'd seen quite a few video reviews saying that this Nitrum charcoal is very good, but I just think I'm pretty hopeless at all charcoal, so it doesn't really matter how good it is because I'm not very good with it. But anyway, I've got it, and maybe one of these days I might try and do some charcoal drawings. We shall see. I also have here plastic container full of some inks that I've not used in a while. I've got three pigmented inks by Art Spectrum. These are actually really lovely. That's a lovely phthalo blue or cyan. That's a yellow and we've got a red. These are really pretty colors. I've used them in a couple of artworks. One of them is actually hanging in a friend's house in Florida. done with those three inks. I also have some of these Amsterdam acrylic inks. I've got white, black and grey and I ended up getting these for a particular project I did a couple of years ago which was drawing hands on a skateboard and I'll see if I've got a picture of that to put up. And I also have these ones, which are the Paper Mill watercolour inks, and I really haven't used them. I put them all in here. I think they were on sale, and so I just grabbed a bunch of them. I don't think they're very light fast, but I think I might have to pull these out and see what they're like. I got these from an Australian store called Riot Art and Craft. This was another thing I showed in a haul video six months ago and I still haven't opened the thing. I think I'm probably just going to open it and use the pens normally. I've got some permanent markers, there's some metallic ones and there's all sorts of other things. Why don't I open it now because I just keep not using this and it's so bulky and annoying. I just really want to put these pens in a case and not have to have this really annoying piece of cardboard cluttering up the studio. Well, that took forever to open. That was so stubborn. But in here I've got a bunch of ballpoint pens, red, black and blue. These are all Artline brand, by the way. These ones are Supreme Colouring pens. Ooh. <laughs> then I've also got some fine liners. Last but not least, some permanent markers. These are permanents and these one are metallics. So I grabbed a piece of card and I'm just going to swatch a few of them because I'm a little curious to see what they're like. Let's try these metallic ones out and see if they look any good. It's probably hard to, to see much on the white, but oh, that's actually a little bit dry. Oh no, it's working. I just needed to get it going. It does not look very metallic to me except in certain lights, so I don't know about that. Like it has patches of metallic in it. Ooh, that one's more metallic. That one works better. That's pretty. And a gold. So three of them are very metallic looking and that purple does not seem to be very mixed in together, I don't know. <laughs> I'm hoping these ones work. Basically a standard marker, just like a Sharpie really. They've got a similar sort of smell to them. That Sharpie marker smell, very alcoholic. They're quite smooth though. I can see I will use these in some sort of function, especially the black markers. I do tend to go through permanent black markers quite a lot. 
but I might just pop these into my marker collection for whatever use. Let's just try a few of the fine liners. Well, they're nice. I like that. These might be quite good for a little drawing. What else have we got? These are the coloring pens. They're pretty too. It's a much thicker nib. Wow, that's a beautiful color. Ooh, I like those. I think I might have to color in a page in a book with these because they're really pretty. I'm presuming this is a fairly standard ballpoint pen. Looks about a, it's a 1.0 millimeter, so they're not very fine, but ball point pen. I mean, <laughs> works like a pen should work. I do quite like sketching with ballpoint pens, so I will add them into my collection. I mean, you can never have too many ballpoint pens, am I right? <laughs> so what I might do is keep my permanent markers separately. And I knew I had a use for this little green pen case. I'm going to put the ballpoint pens just in this side for now. And I think I might put the fine liners and the coloring pens in the main part of it. I have a drawer where I keep all of my pencil cases for pens and things like that, so <laughs> guess where these are going? <laughs> but I might actually keep them out and do a colouring in my own time just to see what they're like. Oh boy, my voice is getting a bit croaky. I've had some water, but I think it's just really, really dry outside, and so I am getting a very dry voice from talking, so I will try and wrap this up pretty quickly. But I did find this little Derwent box that... I had lost down the back of something and I dug it out. It is actually one of those ink tents boxes. I've only used it a little bit. I don't actually think I liked it very much. It went quite chalky from what I remember, which is no doubt why it ended up getting lost in the first place. And also I've lost the lid to this brush, which isn't the best brush in the world. So I need to find something that's a bit better there, but I will revisit this set and try it out again. I know they've released a metallic and a graphite tint one. I'm kind of on the fence as to whether I want them because I wasn't so keen on this, but I really do love the box and if anything I would pull out the ink tents things and fill it with paint so it will have a use somehow. Also don't forget that for my birthday last year I did get the ink tents blocks. I haven't forgotten about these, I just have not got around to reviewing them yet. It's on my list, I will hopefully get there very soon. Another lovely set that my husband bought for me back from Switzerland when he bought me back the Grafwood pencils is the 84 set of Neo Color 2s. And I have used these quite a bit, but not for a long time. And they were in one of my drawers. I pulled it out and went, oh yes, I do have these. So I've just got swatches that I've done with them. I did find some discontinued crowns as well, which is annoying that the phthalo blue is discontinued. So I have two of them and once they're gone, then they're gone for good. These are the other trays, but they come like this. You can see I've used some of them, not a great deal, but they are kind of in a bit of disarray. I think I actually upended this and they went everywhere. They are such a beautiful set. So I am going to swatch these out in that book of mine, the big book of color charts. There is indeed a page for the Carandash Neo Colors. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, I found it. See, Carandash Neo Color 2, and here is the chart. So I think what I will do is a swatch of all of these into this book as well. So let me know if you want to see that video. You're probably going to see it sooner or later anyway. And of course I have about a ton of sketchbooks which I've used or partly used or haven't used at all and so I really need to go through and sort out my sketchbooks but I've got this one which has not been used, I've got this one which has got you know, I think just random little drawings but is mostly unused, I've got a grey one with some really crappy drawings in there <laughs> and I've got a visual art journal I don't think this one's been used at all. I've got this one. What's this got in it? Oh, it's got a test page. How fun. And some patterns and random stuff in here. A couple here. <laughs> this one's still in the plastic. <laughs> then I've got this beautiful Strathmore mixed media one. That is brand new. I haven't used it. I also had this one, which is a Hannah Muller Nostalgie sketchbook, and I've only done a tiny bit in it. I've done this, 
a snail. As you can see, I had an accident with it. I can't remember what it was, but I think it might have been this page. The water ran or something. I somehow got it wet and it's gone and leaked through the entire book. And so this book has pretty much had it. But I can't bear to throw it out because the paper's so beautiful. And so I think it's still actually relatively okay, although the inside parts are just damaged so I will try and persevere with this and just use it as a sketchbook and just use it up but I don't want to throw it out it was expensive paper I was gutted when I ruined it but this is just a small portion of the sketchbooks I have I still have some unused etch-a-sketchbooks and all of that sort of thing but I think I'm going to talk about my sketchbooks at another time because uh, there's so many of them but that's all I have today. I just thought I'd go through and show you some of the stuff that's been lurking around in my studio and which I really want to get out and use. I'm trying harder this year not to buy too much stuff, although that has been a total bust so far. But maybe further in the year, I will actually spend more time using the things I already have rather than acquiring new stuff. It's just a bit overwhelming sometimes. But this year, I really want to focus on using some of these products, doing some reviews on them and just having fun with my art supplies. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And I will see you all again really soon in my next video. I hope you're having a wonderful day out there. Swatch so you later. Bye!